not emitting that much 808 nanometers. I don't think it is totally unfiltered in the infrared. It is just poorly filtered. The 50 mW is emitting more infrared, but useless for the next test, where I will freeze the laser. With the 5 mW cooled down, let us confirm that it is not emitting any light, as shown in a previous video. Well, it is not emitting green, as it is supposed to do. With my eyes, I don't see this odd violet light, because it is invisible infrared light. Like the light from your remote control, which the camera clearly can see too. I can only see this light if I use an infrared detector card. Actually, with the spectrometer setup, why don't we test the wavelength of remote control light? It is centered around 930 nanometers, as were all remotes I tested. Interesting. My camera will pick up weak 930 nanometers light, but not strong 980 nanometers light from this infrared laser. So we now know my camera will pick up the 808 nanometers from the pump diode inside the green laser, but not the 1064 nanometers from the crystals. After warming up for a while, the green laser gradually starts emitting more and more green light, as the crystals inside start converting the infrared to green. The crystals are only efficient at the right temperature and when hit by the right infrared wavelength. Let's cool the laser again and get some numbers on how it performs cold. There we have it, 3 milliwatts of only infrared output, no green, and no 1064 nanometers infrared, and not even 808 nanometers infrared like the warm laser. When cold, it is emitting a shorter 800 nanometers infrared. I explain why the wavelength of diode lasers is temperature dependent in another video. 3 milliwatts. Not really a lot, is it? I believe I have something more alarming. This garden decoration laser also features a green DPSS laser. In Denmark, these are typically used around Christmas to decorate houses on the outside with red and green laser dots, meaning the laser could be standing outside on a freezing cold night. The manufacturers seem to be somewhat aware of the issue. Inside the heatsink, otherwise meant for keeping the green laser cool in hot weather, they put a resistive heating element. With this, the green laser can be warmed up to perform well even at a frost clear night. But did they remember to add an inexpensive infrared filter to keep the green laser from emitting infrared laser light as it heats up? Here's a quick test on the spectrometer. The red laser is taped over and the warm green laser shows very little infrared leakage. This looks like the spectrum from a well-filtered DPSS laser. Good. What happens when it is cold? Alright, the cold laser is now turned on. What will we see? Oh no, do you see that? Let me remove the grid lines to make it more visible. And turn off the studio light. This is basically a strong infrared laser when turned on in the cold. 800 nanometers like the cold pen, just much stronger. I have measured it to be around 40 milliwatts of infrared in a Patreon video. After a few minutes, the heating elements and the room temperature has heated the laser enough for it to start lasering in the green. However, the 808 nanometers leakage is still there. Why was it not showing in the test of the warm laser? Then the obvious hit me. Diffraction. There's a double axis diffraction grating in front of the laser to split the single beam into hundreds. The longer the wavelength, the more the beam is spread. 
but there are several orders and since the 1064 and 532 nanometers are harmonic